In this video, we'll take a look at a popular format for exchanging data between systems called XML. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. Like JSON in the previous video, XML was designed to store and transport data. If you've ever looked at HTML, then XML should look somewhat familiar. It's made up of elements. Each element can contain tags, attributes, other elements, or any combination. One main difference between XML and HTML. XML was designed to carry data, while HTML was designed to display data. Unlike HTML, XML does not have predefined tags, so it's more flexible, hence the name extensible markup language. Let's take a look at a simple example to start. Here we see an XML element with a tag called name. The value is between the name and slash name. We'll look at how to extract that in a little bit. Here's a variation of the same element with an added attribute called type. In this case, the attribute indicates the data is text. In some cases, you might see an element in this format. This tells the system that there is a name element, but it has no value. You may also see no value represented this way. Either way may be used depending on the context. Here's an example of elements within elements to represent a complex object. Person contains two elements, first name and last name with the values Chuck and Tomasi respectively. See? Not too difficult to understand. Like so many other things the computer does, white spaces like spaces, tabs, and new lines generally don't matter and that same person object could be represented this way. Occasionally, we may find XML payloads from a web service like this. As a result, we can use an XML beautifier to make it easier to read and understand. To access data within XML, we use the XML document 2 JavaScript class to parse and extract information. Let's take a look at a quick example. Let's say we've been given this XML payload from a web service and stored it in a variable called XML string. We were told to get the value of the attribute down in test 1, 2, which should be ABCD1234. To do that, we could use a script like this. The first line creates the object called XML doc by instantiating the class XML document 2. Line 2 parses the string so the object understands its contents. Then, line 3 uses get node text to use what's called an XPath to walk to the value we want. It's pretty easy to read the path that getNodeText took to retrieve the value we wanted. We may also see this represented like this because there's no possibility of confusion. If we see an XPath with a subscript like customer sub1, it means that there are multiple customer elements in the customers element and that the one we want is the first. Important to note, unlike many other things in computing, XPath does not start at zero. The first element is subscript 1. There are many other methods to the XML document 2 class to get and set information in an XML object, and I invite you to review the documentation referenced in the description below. Also take a look at the XML node class for additional methods for retrieving data in an XML document node something to know about the XML names when creating XML. Element names are case sensitive. Element names must start with the letter or underscore. XML names cannot start with the letters XML, in any case, upper, lower, or mixed. Element names can contain letters, digits, hyphens, underscores, and periods. Element names cannot contain spaces. And any name can be used. There are no reserved words except for XML as noted earlier. In the previous video, we did an introduction to JSON, the JavaScript object notation. XML and JSON have some similarities, including both are human readable or self-describing. Both are hierarchical. They're able to contain values within values. Both are fairly common and used by lots of programming languages and web services. However, there are some differences worth noting as well. JSON doesn't use an end tag. JSON is generally shorter. JSON is quicker to read and write, 
and JSON can use arrays. So now we have a basic knowledge of how to read and use XML for those cases when you need to use it in a web service. I hope you'll join me in the next video to learn about credentials, credential aliases, and connections to discover the various ways to authenticate with services.